Now, obviously, logs is one of these units. You either get it or you don't get it. But there will be a day that you will look back on these and go, that's it? Okay. So sometimes you just kind of get a mental block up. And now, the reason why logs exist is for this example here. If you had example 4 to the x equals 16. Now, those are the ones you usually get when you're, if you ever have to find the exponent. And most people go, it's 2. Yep, it is 2. Okay? But the way you figure this out is your base does not move, and you'd go log 4 of 16 equals x. Now, if you remember back to some of you a couple months ago, some of you guys seven months ago, if you ever have log a to the a to the n, it equals n, right? Do you remember that? So this would be the same thing as log 4 to the 4 squared equals x. Therefore, 2 times 1 equals x. 2 equals x. Now this one you're going, I just knew it was 2. Why'd you go through all that work, okay? Where this becomes valuable is when I give you this example where it's log, or sorry, not where it's just 4 to the x equals 15. Okay, These ones you're not going to be doing by guessing and testing. That, uh, that could be to 10 decimal places, and even if you round it to 10 decimal places, that's still not exact. So this one, you would put log 4 to 15 equals x. Now, you can probably think that numbers may be around like 1.8, 1.9, right? But log 4 to the 15 is the exact answer. And how do you, anyone remember how to put that in your calculator? Log 15 divided by log 4. So what's the answer? Just try it out, because I just made it up. What is it? 1.95. Okay, so we're getting the, there's a 5, dot, dot, dot. So, the, it's kind of like if you were doing any surveying or if you were launching something to the moon. If you use 3.14 for pi, it would miss the moon, okay? And they don't even go to 10 decimal places. They use pi in all of their, just like this one, if they needed x to be, 1.953445. They wouldn't put that. They would put log 4 of 15. Okay? So the reason logs exist is for those exponents that are not rounded, that are not exact. Okay? Uh, 4 squared equals 16. Yep. Don't need logs for that. 4 to the what equals 15. Uh, that one's not as easy. And the only way you knew how to do it prior to this year was put 4 to the x into y1, 15 into y2, see where the 2 intersect, and that would be your 1.9534, but it's still not exact. Okay? And in fact, some people would round that to 2. Well, 4 squared isn't 15, right? So rounding it is not what we need. So that's why logs exist, and if you know the rules, these are pretty simple. They don't change. Okay? They're not like applications where every time there's a different scenario. Now it's time, now it's a ladder up a tree and and uh, you know the tree's leaning and all that stuff. It's like, oh every everyone's different. It's like I can't even track down a way to do these all the time. Where logs are the same every single time. So I guess that's why I like them, because once you know these rules, they're the same thing every time.
Okay, it's just like when you knew exponents, it was the same thing every time. But there are lots of rules to learn for exponents. So I guess let's get at it. When you have a to the m times a to the n, remember that this would be a to the m plus n. Okay, so we are adding. So yeah, if you're if you're mi mixing up that rule every so often, the logs don't go well either. Right? And some people go, oh, I can't do logs. And it's like, well, actually, you're having trouble with the exponent stuff still. And this would be a to the m minus n. Now, when you have a power to a power, in the case of the next one, that would be a to the r times s. And in the next one, this one, because these are multiplying, you can actually kind of like distribute it in. So this would be a to the m times b to the m. And remember, it works the other way, too. If you have a to the m, b to the m, and I can put them together and take out an m, right? These interchange back and forth. Now, this one here, a, m, n. Now, you know what really keeps people have uh, tricks like, you know, bow tie or tie bow, tie in top, inside, bottom, outside. But I actually think of this all the time, a to the 1 half. I know that's this. There's an imaginary 2 out there. So that always keeps my bearings where, the, oh, yeah, the bottom number goes on the very outside. Okay? So it's going to be n. And the m can be either in here or out here. And depending on, oh, I guess there's a big or for me there. I could have wrote it there. A. And depending on the reason, I would do it in that order. Like if you gave me, say, you know, square root 25 cubed, right? Well, why cube, 20, why cube 25, get this huge number, and then take the square root of it? Why don't I do this and go... Because then the square root of 25 is 5. 5 cubed is 125. So I can do it in my head if I manipulate it, where 25 cubed, I have to get that, and I have to take the square root of that. I'd be using my calculator, which if you have a calculator, it's no big deal. But sometimes those are all variables, so that you can't use your calculator. This one, very similar to this one here. This is a to the m, b to the m. Okay, Anything to the 0 power equals one. Okay. Now, if you were to put this into log form, you would go log a to the one equals zero. So that's another one you should always kind of remember because actually my one's a little bit high. It's, it's just on this level right here, right? So when that 1 is in there, it's going to equal 0, going off the same premise as a to the 0 equals 1. If you have a to the negative r, remember that's just 1 over a to the r. Okay, do these in grade 10, do these in grade 11, do these in grade 12, twice. Oh, I got that. Okay, now logarithms. So I kind of talked about them already. Now, they are the inverse of y equals b to the x. So if this is y equals b to the x, then this would be the inverse of it. This would be equal, y equals log b to the x. Yeah, I'm always bad for that. Okay, now, and just remember that what is the inverse of y equals b to the x? What's the inverse? No, when you do the inverse, you switch the x and the y. So x equals b to the y. 
And do you see why these two are the same? Okay, so there's a way to prove their inverses. Switch the x and y, turn into log form, because these two are the same. And that messes with students too. They're like, what? I thought when you mix them up like that, so always do the inverse and then change it to log form if you want to get to see the uh, inverse picture. Okay, so you have log b of x equals y if and only if. That's what that stands for. b to the y equals x. Now, what is really important is that the base stays the base. The other two interchange. And when students start to, to mix up their rules, that's when weird things happen. Because I'll say, OK, you got b to the y equals x. And some people will go, oh, yeah, that's b to the x equals y. Those are equal. And I go, they're not equal. You just did the inverse. But you said that that's what you do. You switch the x and the y. I said, no, you put a log down and then switch the x and the y. And they're like, oh, right? So it's all these rules that the old study sheet will help you out if you get them mixed up. And you can always test them in your calculator, too. OK, so if we start just expressing these in log form, remember, do not move the base. So it's going to stay. And the other two will trade places. 2 to the negative 2 equals 1 quarter. And you can even prove this, because this would be 1 over 2 to the 2. right? And 1 over 2 to the 2 is 4, so 1 quarter. So if you're changing it from log to exponential, get rid of the log. And if you're changing from exponential to log, put a log there. Okay, Those are the things that start to make you a bit frustrated when you're getting your test back. Okay, Now this one. Now for me to keep things really straight, I like to actually keep the base on the same side. So I got a log 6, and the other two will change. That'll be an H, and that'll be a T. The book will always put the log on the left, but if you want to stay consistent and always putting, keeping the base where it is. Okay, this one here, it's got a logarithm inside of a logarithm. So we can, first of all, let's just treat this. Let's just move those two. So 2 to the 4 equals log 3 of x. Now, after I've got that done, I'm going to want to keep the base where it is. Now, there's two things you can do. You can change this to 16. Maybe that would help students see this next step. But then now this is even easier. This would be 3 of 16 equals x. Yeah, it's just uh, it's multiple choice, right? You never know what you have to match up. OK, so today is 100% 30-1. We're not doing any derivatives today. Um, now, this one here, if you have that third level, that's supposed to be an R. doesn't look like a nice R on mine, but it is. So that third level can come to the front log b of x. This is called the power law. Okay, The next two, extremely important when we get to derivatives. This is log b of x plus log b of y. It's called the product law.
and log b x y is log b of x minus log b of y. And that's called your quotient law. Okay, so you can see the advantage of taking 31 while you're taking 30 because you are redoing some of the stuff again and the diploma's not far away so it, uh, it's always nice to be working with it again. Same with the trig that we just went through. Okay, so let's just do a couple questions here. Use the law of logs to rewrite this, okay? Now, we've got some things multiplying, we've got some things dividing. So we can first split this up into log 7 of AB minus log 7 of the cube root of CD squared. And only the D is squared, right? Yep. Okay, now what's happening next is probably um, you would be stuck with that cube root, but if you got this to be log 7, and this would be c to the 1 third, d to the 2 thirds, Uh, yep, yeah. and now we see we can have we can use the product law to split this A and B up, and we can use the product law to split this up. Where the problem comes is how people do that. So this one would be just log seven A plus log seven B. minus bracket. That is very important because uh, you would get the wrong answer if. Okay, so that would be log 7c, the one-third, plus log 7d to the two-thirds. Okay, so this is a step that I wouldn't encourage skipping, but I know that some people will, and they'll just maybe get the negative in there, and that's fine as long as you're really being conscious of it. So we could really split this up now by going log 7a plus log 7b minus one-third log 7c minus two-thirds log 7 D. So we used the power law, product law, and quotient law just to do that question. And, and this would be a question that would rewrite off your 30-1 unit exam, or probably more commonly on the diploma, they want to take an absolute mess and say write it as a single log, okay? And when you've got x's and y's and z's and q's and r's and everything, your calculator can't really back you up unless till after you want to substitute numbers in for those, check if you get the same answer. It does help. Now, um, this one's even not that bad. But if you get a bunch of minuses in there, take out a minus sign and group them all together and put them last, okay? You should remember that from last year or couple months ago. So the first thing we can do is we do have, uh, you can never ever combine if there's numbers out front. Okay, so we want to make sure we get those out of there. So the, this would be log 2x4 plus log 2y to the one-third minus log 
2z cubed plus 1 squared. So we always want to get rid of coefficients before you go and use your laws. So this would be log 2 of x to the 4 y to the 1 3rd minus log 2 z cubed plus 1 squared. Now, and the reason we can do this is because Right, these bases are all the same. So you can only use your laws if your bases are the same, so I'll just keep an eye out for that. Now I since I still have bases and I they're the same, I can go log two, that would be x to the four, y to the one third over z cubed plus one squared. Okay, not so bad, eh? Better than trig, eh? 